Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and today I'm taking a first impressions look at Deep Diving Simulator. So, while most of the time I look at simulators because, you know, they're probably going to be kind of janky and bad, this one I am taking a look at because, as I'm sure a good number of you know, I am interested in all things underwater. And a game that's even a little bit like Endless Ocean on the PC would be welcome for me. So let's get in here with very little fanfare. As far as I understand, this is pretty much Lagoon. just a game about diving in various locales. Oh, okay, I thought there was going to be like a explanation of the area or something, but no. I guess we're just going to dive. And this is, this is how it begins. There's no tutorial or anything, as far as I know. Ah, Misty Lagoon. I have such fond memories of this place. Right, no daydreaming on the job. I guess we'll probably get some explanation on this first dive. Get your feet wet and slowly explore your surroundings. I hope that suit doesn't have any holes in it. Also, that's a nice JPEG of an island ahead. Your objective is pretty simple. Collect anything you may think has some value, and I can sell, like coins, pots, minerals, and other valuables. They won't give me research grants anymore, so I need you to sell this valuable treasure. This will help our quest. And there's a container somewhere around these parts. So if you happen to come across it, find out if there's some treasure inside. Ah, so he means like a, a Tupperware container full of cocaine. Don't worry. We're not robbing anybody. We're just cleaning the underwater world from things that don't belong in there. You know, you're trying to explain away your argument, Professor, but you're just making yourself sound worse. You're doing a big favor for all of us. Especially just me. Just up when you see it, okay? What movie was it where there was a ship full of, like, sunken... Kamalu Heroin. is the most peaceful of diving sites. Misty Lagoon holds its good reputation. And a bunch of criminals trying to get it. Was it the Lagoon? Waters, as well as the beautiful and endangered coral reef. Often called rainforests of the sea, coral reefs form some of the world's most diverse ecosystems and are estimated to cover 115,000 square miles, which is under 0.1% of the ocean's entire surface area. And in about 20 years, they won't exist anymore. Because of the how toxic we've made our ocean. Welcome to Deep Diving Simulator. You can view and change your control settings. Your primary task is to collect valuable items that are scattered in the depths. Locate the first item and pick it up. Alright, so what do we got here? Toggle weapon. So yeah, there is hostile wildlife down here. Switch to charge beam. All right, Samus. Healing beam. Flashlight. Roll. Switch to healing beam. Switch to charge beam. Switch to knife. Roll left. Swim down is control. Scanner is Z. All right. Simple enough. I might actually have to turn the sensitivity up this time. Usually I have to turn it down. Control, steering sensitivity. Turn that up a little bit. Okay, that's just keybinds. Also, every single menu you have to hit save. Alright, it's a little better. Of course, you're supposed to be a little drifty because you are underwater. And you do have to, like, pick up speed. You don't just go when you press W. Start kicking your little fins. Alright, that looks like something... Oh. Alright, not sure if there's a break, but uh, the controls are going to be a little awkward here. Pretty sure it's easier to swim in real life underwater than to try to simulate it. Alright. Also, is there just like a an un... Great. You've just collected your first item. Keep an eye out for other items and try to find that container. An unspoken rule that all simulator games have to have a ugly but functional UI. Like, I feel like all of them always have this, like, bare bones, hey, it works and it conveys information, but that's it, kind of UI. Definitely not the prettiest underwater game. Use your flashlight in dark areas. Remember that you can use it only for a limited amount of time. I'm not giving you more batteries. Also, you take damage by 
bumping into the ground, which how would that work underwater? Just picture yourself like, Oh no, I'm swimming too fast and I can't stop myself. As you slowly glide into the ground and bump into it. There's a... There's a lack of wildlife at the moment. I mean, there's a couple fish, but for a coral reef, it seems pretty empty down here. Also, we're definitely not deep diving at the moment. So, the title is misleading at the moment. Alright, so I'm starting to get a feel for how the, you know, acceleration and stopping works, at least. Oh, that... I mean, you tried, but those really do not look good <laughs> for underwater plants. Still, you can see what kind of relaxing game this is meant to be, or kind of meant to be like. Hidden container. What's well, a zero out of seven? Oh, you mean this shipping crate? I guess that is the one they showed at the start. Silver plate. Doesn't silver tarnish pretty heavily in salt water, though? I guess it depends if it's sterling silver or not. Great! The eco gun is a great tool to fight for the purity of our underwater nature. By exterminating all impure life forms. This ingenious invention emits ultrasound waves with a special frequency that breaks down pollutants and some objects into harmless molecules. Alright, so it's a magic gun. You can also use the eco gun to scare off predators if they attack you. I think you also had something like that in Endless Ocean 2, where you could get attacked by sharks and stuff. That's some kind of, like, sonar pulse gun. I also... Alright, yeah, so we got... The healing beam. The basic eco gun operating mode is used to clean underwater creatures from contamination. The single charge mode is used to scare off predators and to destroy certain objects such as fishing nets. All right. So, do I need this to shoot this open? I'm guessing that's why it's flashing red. Yep. Just disintegrated. That's a safe tool to be using in the ocean. I've made an experimental laser weapon to help you clear the contamination. Alright. It didn't even say what that was. Also, you can you see- You just acquired an underwater scanner. Alright, that's what we found down here. Use this prototype device to detect and mark all items worth your attention in your immediate environment. The scanner will detect interesting items as well as environmentally harmful contaminants. Time to save the marine life. Use the scanner and find a contaminated creature. And if you can't find one, I'll make one for you. For demonstration purposes. The scanner highlights valuable items in yellow, garbage and pollution in green, and hazards in red. Remember, the sc To heal a contaminated creature, you have to equip the eco gun. Switch to the healing beam mode. Alright, so we gotta find... I guess there's that fish right there. Gonna heal the shit out of it. And I guess those are... Hazardous urchins? Alright. Single contaminated fish. Um... I think I va vaporized it, because it disappeared. I'm not close enough. Are you swimming in the ground? Oh, you have to hold it down. Alright, healed that blue tang. Masked butterfly fish. At least they do actually name the species that you are interacting with. Just blast you with healing beam. Alright, so I guess there is more treasure here. As well as more contaminated fish. I don't know if there's actually, like, uh, completion. 
a specific thing I'm trying to do. Or if I'm just collect the treasure, heal the fish. Don't get pricked to death. Alright, well, I've still got six minutes of oxygen at the bottom left there. And I've got a 15 out of 84. I don't know if that's my maximum capacity or if that's literally how many things there are to pick up in this area. Because if there is, I'm definitely not going to pick up 84. There is a distinct lack of arthropods around here. No crabs, no lobsters. Really no anything over in this area. We had to make the map bigger, but we didn't want to put anything else over there. that fella. Did we put that there? Is that why it's right next to the boat? Also, can I vaporize urchins just because they're mildly threatening? Alright, we got some kind of a uh, whale here. Or are those manatees? Oh. Actually, I believe that is a dugong. They seem like they're doing fine. Aside from, you know, the boat propeller scars those probably are from. Queen angelfish. Oh man, so there's 21 of these just in this area here. Let's grab a few more, and then I'll see if I can ascend. Seashell. Better hope none of these are live conch shells. Because they are extremely venomous, even when they're dead. They basically shoot like a neurotoxin dart at things nearby. Okay, I heard a lot of sounds. What is that? What is this hostile thing down here? Hidden container. Okay, I guess that just tells you what area I'm near. Now this had like a hazard symbol on it, but it also has a tr treasure symbol. It's just a seashell, okay. Not sure what's threatening about that. Or it's, it, I guess it's supposed to be yellow, but it just kind of looks like reddish-orange at first, and then it turns yellow. So not much to do in this area. Just kind of chill and collect treasure. And I assume this XP will be used to buy, like, I don't know, perks or equipment or something. Or maybe it does nothing at all, which is also possible. really going to be making a lot of money off these seashells, Doc? Oh, what are you? It's a shame I can't just, like, scan them or something to see the species unless they're toxicified. Alright, so can I... Oh, there's a try again option. I don't know if I have to just swim back to the boat. I am dying from swimming into the ground. Ah, we can turn those in for the five cent deposit. Now that's some treasure. All right, let's grab another shell and let's swim back to the boat and see if he'll let me on. No, you don't have enough treasure yet. Get back in there. Where is, okay, there's the rowboat. The wreck of a rowboat. Okay, where is the boat? You think it would be easy to find a ship? Can I surface? 
Nope. You just hit your head on the ceiling. Alright, where's the- there's the dugongs. Okay, there's the boat. It's just kind of a shadow in the distance. But I assume that I can just, like, climb... back up? No? I can't actually exit, apparently? Am I- <laughs> Am I just gonna have to run out of oxygen before he's like, Alright, now you can come back. But maybe the levels just work on, like, a time limit, and it's like, Alright, you're out of oxygen, so... Level's over. I guess we'll find out if I suffocate or not here. I think you do actually swim faster with your hands free like in Subnautica. Which, at the time of recording this, a new update has just come out for that as well, so... Hopefully I can get some double C videos out in the same week. Though, of course, with every Subnautica update, I do have to usually spend, like, a couple hours preparing for the video. Finding the new stuff, marking it, as well as just having to get set up, because you do pretty much have to start a new game for every update if you want to ensure that everything works as intended. Thankfully, I finally realized that Below Zero does actually have a skip intro console command, because otherwise you have to play through that whole section before the base is destroyed every time. You know, it's not just like the original game where you could skip a cutscene, or before that, when there was no cutscene, just be dropped immediately in. Alright, we got a minute of oxygen left. You only have one minute of oxygen left. If you don't resurface on time, all your collected items will be lost. Also, you'll die, but that costs me less than losing all the treasure. Each resurface saves you progress and your collected items. Keep that in mind. He didn't say your, he said you. It saves you progress. It is funny that every time I pick something up, I get a couple seconds of oxygen out of it. I'm just picturing him, like, huffing a shell that has some air in it. Alright, I gotta find the boat again, and see if he'll actually let me surface, because there's no, like, surface option. Uh, what? I know, but, like, how do I surface? Pressing and holding the accelerate button. Um, let's see. Acceleration is left shift, so it's pretty much just sprint. Is there a surface button? Commonly known as the most peaceful oh, no. diving site. All right, like. Welcome to. Before anything else, I have to figure out how to get out of the goddamn water because otherwise, there's no point in even trying. Can I touch the anchor? Is that maybe how I do this? Yeah, fuck you, fishing net. Use your flashlight. It's weird that he tells you with a flashlight. I don't even think there are any dark areas in this map. All right, so I can't touch the anchor. I'm taking damage just from like swimming alongside the anchor. Okay. 
I can't swim into the anchor bay. Seriously, how do I get out of the water? There should be like a little, you know, ladder to climb up or something. But this does not look like a ship that's meant for diving off of. Is this it? No, that's the other anchor. I mean, it seems pretty weird to me that they don't tell you how to surface at all. Because that seems kind of essential for, you know, making any progress. Am I going to have to actually, like, go in the forums and look at how do I surface so I don't die? Because I'm not seeing any way to get on this boat. Like, there should just be, like, a return to boat option. Oh, you have to... Okay. When you see that indicator at the top of the screen, the one that just says, like, top of the ocean, you have to hold down left click to surface. So, do I need to do everything here? Well, I think I need to get the sonar again. I think that's the actual objective here. So let's see if I can Great. do that again and then see if we can get to another dive location, because I would hope that it doesn't make you complete it in order to move on. That would be pretty tedious. Then again, tedium is kind of the name of the game with most simulators. So, I guess we'll see. I can't believe they didn't actually just mention, like, hey, swim up to the surface and click to escape before you die horribly. Just picture this diver, like, flailing around next to the hull of the boat, unable to breach the surface. And you're just looking down at him like, what the hell is he doing? Alright, where was that shipping crate? Okay, that's the rowboat there, so it wasn't over that way. It was over, like, this way. Boy, I guess you really do accelerate when you hit accelerate. Suppose a place like this, there's no reason that we'd have to escape via the boat itself, just surfacing. We'd be able to paddle back to the boat. Okay, so I think it's over this way. Grab all this stuff. So yeah, these are like little, I guess, kind of, uh, monuments. Oh. Okay, so taking damage, that is just your O2. It's not your health meter. Okay, so that, I didn't realize that what we picked up is the eco gun. So, all of the tools we're using we just found sitting in the ocean, and we're like, yeah, we'll use these. Obviously, they still work. here. Heal this tang. Alright, so now that I got my tools, I feel like I should be able to service and potentially dive somewhere else. 
Or maybe this is the only diving map. I know that's not the case, though, because there are sharks and other things. You can kind of do like a drive-by pickup. You don't even have to really stop. Just like... Scoop. Alright, so... I guess I will surface and see what happens now. I'm glad you can't hit your head on the surface. Next rewards. No, well, we got faster flippers. And faster recharge on the eco gun. So, I guess if I hit dive again, it'll just dive to the same area, but I'm wondering if I can... Okay, so when it said main menu, it actually just meant the boat. Pirate's nest. Find the scanner and 50% of the items? That sounds kinda tedious. Misty Lagoon. Misty Lagoon. Did you know that underneath the Asia continent there is a huge underground ocean the size of the Arctic Ocean? I did not know that. Commonly known as Okay, it's <laughs> it just does that every time. So I think maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here and then off camera I'll, you know, collect the 50% the of stuff so that we can end the video on a new location and hopefully see some hazardous creatures. Because otherwise this first area doesn't make for the best video on its own. So let's cut ahead a bit after doing some collecting. Good job, rookie! Fine things you've collected. Really great job. I'll be able to sell those seashells for at least 20 bucks. I think you're ready to try something a little bit more challenging now. Hmm. Think you can handle Pirate's Nest? So yeah, I collected enough stuff in Misty Lagoon here to unlock the next map. It sounds scary, but that's just a name. Don't worry about it. There are no pirates there anymore. Just ghost pirates. Nest. I also unlocked uh, the pickaxe there, which I guess this level has three pickaxable objects. But it looks like we're going to be doing more of the same, which is a shame because it seems like this game is a little lacking in depth, despite the name. All right, let's dive in here. Yar! Let's fetch us some booty, matey. What? Do you know how long it's been since I had a new recruit? I've been alone on this ship for like three years. The university wouldn't send me any more recruits. It gets quite lonely out here. Loosen up, will ya? Sheesh. You know, I could interpret that in another way, but I won't. All right then. Pirate's Nest should have something of value to us, so keep your eyes peeled out there. Oh, and watch out for rays too. Remember, you're covering the beers tonight, so find something good. They're so-called cousins of sharks, but they're relatively harmless. Unless you get too close, that is. Be careful around them, all right? If one of them comes too close, just wave your knife. That should do the trick. Hopefully, it will not come to that. You say they're relatively harmless, but, you know, tell that to our dear patron saint of animals, taken from us too soon, dear Mr. Irwin. Remember that some items may be more difficult to find than others. That's such a, like, no-shit kind of statement. Even though piracy dates all the way back to the 14th century BC, it may be reasonable to assume that it has existed for as long as mankind used oceans for transporting goods and resources. Pirate's Nest is one of the infamous sites which gave the thieves seclusion and reprieve from their persecutors. The golden age of piracy is long gone, but the determined can still find treasure and valuables beneath the water's surface. So he warned us about the rays, but not the goddamn jellyfish. I think I would be more worried about the jellyfish. Alright, so we got some dolphins here. But yeah, it looks like we're going to be doing more of the same. I was kind of hoping there'd be some sharks in this level, because I do not care enough to want to collect another, like, 50 objects. Well, 
You see down there it says 103, but that actually seems to be a combination of both the pickups and the healing animals. But damage. What's gonna damage me here? Are these tubes? Big old coral pipes? Oh. No, I think the dolphin actually reacted to my sonar. Alright, well, I guess we'll uh, take a look around the area, see what we can see. But, don't think there's too much more to show for this game, which is a shame. I was kind of expecting something better, something more complicated. Ooh. One of my favorite little guys. These are. Nope. Oh, it's a little stuck there for a second. These are leafy sea dragons, and they are a relative of the horse. 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 Seahorse. <laughs> Oh, look at them. Look at these little weirdos trying to hide in the leaves, even though there's no leaves around for them to hide in. They're amazing and also pretty endangered, since they don't breed all that much. Oh, there's a tiny... I think it's another tang. Tang, you can kind of recognize their body shape pretty easily when you know what they look like. Man, this it's a real chatty dolphin. Apparently, I'm taking like some real minor like scrape damage from just touching stuff. We just blast all the barnacles off him with this healing beam. So yeah, this is kind of a chill game, but at the same time, it seems like it has the same problem as stuff like, uh, was it Treasure Hunting Simulator or whatever? In that, I tried to do a video on that, but there was just so little in terms of, like, mechanics that it didn't seem worth taking a look at. So I kind of deleted the video halfway through because I'm like, yeah, there's nothing happening here. But, you know, this one is underwater, so it gets a slight bonus from me, so it's maybe, you know, mostly boring instead of entirely. Because, yeah, I kind of expected there'd be a little more objectives in this based on the description than just pick up some starfish, shoot some fish with a Healy beam, mine some rocks. I thought there'd be actually like, all right, go down here, take some photos of this, or, you know, go down here and set up these relays. Or just, you know, actual objectives and not like boilerplate simulator collectathon. And again, the game's called Deep Diving Simulator, but it might as well just be called Diving Simulator, because there's no deep diving. Actually, I can't remember the name of it, but there was that diving photography game that I took a look at back when Desura still existed, and that was only on Desura, not on Steam. Reef Shot, that's what it was. But the devs for that actually did give me a uh, Steam key. So I guess they were like, hey, you took a look at it when it was on... Desura, do you want a Steam key now so you can take a look at it again? I was like, yeah, I don't know when I'm going to, but I might get around to checking it out again, so... It might be nice to do that, because that game I remember actually being fairly interesting. I just, you know, kind of fell by the wayside when there's a million other things coming out. But at least in that game, you were actually doing some underwater photography, so you had some actual objectives that were more than just mindlessly swim from shiny thing to shiny thing. And that seems like that's all Deep Diving Simulator has. I'd be interested in seeing the other environments, but that's kind of it. It's like, I want to see the fish, and I want to see the environments, but there's nothing fun about this, you know? You, people might say this is a good kind of, like, chill game to play while you're listening to a podcast, but even that, I feel like there's more interesting things I could be playing while not completely paying attention than just drift to a point. Ooh. It's really dark in this one spot. So, since, well, I didn't find the jellyfish cave, but I don't know. I guess I'll take a quick swim around and ignore the stuff. I think that's going to be pretty much it for deep diving sim. It's a shame. I had higher hopes for this, but I guess it's very rare to find a game 
that is not only described as a simulator, but actually puts simulator in the title. It's hard to find one of those that isn't kind of low effort, you know, quote unquote for casuals. Okay, here's the pirate ship. Like, I don't really know who the market for these kinds of games is. I assume there are people who are like, I just want a low pressure game where I swim around and pick up starfish and occasionally have to remember not to die of suffocation. But like, I feel like an actual diving sim would have you, you know, making your tank mixes and kind of determining your dive route and stuff like that. And instead it's just like, oh, you have an arcade oxygen meter that is seemingly undetermined by depth. There is another game coming out this year that I will probably take a look at and or do a full playthrough of that is another ocean game set in the near future, but it looks a lot better. I can't remember what it's called, though. It's Blue Something, and it is made with uh, help from the BBC and kind of tied into Blue World, at least for kind of research and education purposes. But that looks pretty cool, and I will want to take a look at that but yeah this is just another kind of lackluster simulator that I want to be interesting but it doesn't quite manage it oh I think this is where the jellyfish are scoundrels are these rocks the scoundrels I almost thought that I was about to swim out of the edge of the map when I was looking through that hole Oh, there's a stingray. Marked as dangerous. Let's see if we can get stung by the ray. Wow, those do a lot of damage because it <laughs> emptied out my oxygen tank. I'd like to just pretend that it actually punctured the tank. But yeah, that's deep diving sim. It's uh, it's pretty bad. Pirate's nest. It's disappointing, all around. Like I. I kind of wish we could just get something like Endless Ocean on the PC. Because Endless Ocean was already a pretty sweet game, despite the fact that it was tied to Wii hardware. So getting something like that on a proper system would be really nice. But instead, I just have to resort to emulating Endless Ocean 1 and 2. But alright, I've been Shadefire. This is Deep Diving Simulator. Don't play it. Have fun. And next time, hopefully next time, we'll cover something with a little more depth. Take care, everyone.